Pet ownership is a relatively recent trend in China, and while its popularity is increasing, the knowledge required to be a responsible pet owner isn't keeping pace. And when that cute and cuddly puppy or kitten becomes too much of a burden, they end up in places like this, an animal shelter. The International Center for Veterinary Services organized a free and non-commercial seminar to share knowledge and information on the best practices in animal rescue and shelter management. They also focused on shelter medicine and how to maximize successful adoptions of abandoned pets. ICVS co-founder Frank Fan began the seminar with a talk on the basic mechanics of running an animal shelter. Apart from the crucially important questions of financing and funding, Frank also covered the essentials, such as the first steps to take when you introduce what is possibly a very traumatized animal to the shelter community. You'll need to separate the sick ones from the healthy ones. You absolutely need to do this separation at the very beginning. You also need to separate the docile ones from the ones with an aggressive nature. He says the same principles apply to running a shelter as they do to running a business, and how many animals you can effectively help with the resources that you have. Use management skill to run a shelter is very important and actually is very extremely important and set up your goal um, the question you have to think about either quality or quantity. Frank then passed the baton over to visiting American vet Zenith Sun Ung who offered valuable insights into infectious disease control and the always difficult and often heartbreaking subject of humane euthanasia. He admits that there's a lot that needs to be done to improve services. The basis of this presentation is actually to help with animal welfare and the whole of shelter medicine in Beijing. I was fortunate enough to be able to visit one of the shelters here in Beijing and to kind of see the state of uh, where animal welfare is and what we can do to help all of the animals that are here in Beijing because there are lots of homeless animals and there's lots of things that need to be done. Zinithsen says any improvement in animal welfare begins with the relationship an owner has with their pet. The human-animal bond really has to take place as part of the culture here in China. People really have to value their animals. Um, they have to have them as part of their families, as part of their children, as part of their loved ones, to really understand the importance of the human-animal bond and to put these animals on a pedestal and realize that they're more than just animals. They're our companions. Mary Pung, another co-founder of ICVS, was next on the microphone to share her experience and explain the process of trap, neuter, and release, otherwise known as TNR. Mary explained that TNR is a viable, cost-effective, and humane way of controlling the stray and feral cat populations in Beijing and other cities around China. Cats that are sick, that are dying, that have kittens, and the kittens are sick and then die. This is not good welfare for, it, for any animal. So by controlling the population, we're able to help control these issues, right? Charlotte Landwehr is a TNR advocate and the founder of Charlie's Cats. Because in my own backyard I had lots of stray cats and I started to take care of them because they were very noisy. Then I started to sell like key hangers and mobile phone hangers. From that money I pay for the neuter and spay of these animals and then I return them back into my compound. Or other places. The seminar was interactive, with participants able to put their questions to the experts and share some of their own experiences in operating animal shelters. I think there's still hope in our nation's dog or pet culture. There are so many people taking it seriously, and so many kind people who are concerned about this issue. This concern, together with the implementation of an animal protection law in China, will have a major impact to push things forward. 
For the seminar today, I'm very happy to see there's a professional team hosting it, an authoritative animal medical institute doing it. In this way, we, teams that promote animal protection, can learn a lot of professional knowledge that we normally had no access to. Frank and Mary were delighted with the turnout and the positive reaction of the participants. I'm amazed that there are a lot of people come in with, with high spirit and I, um, I see the hopes and I think the, uh, eventually if we keep the spirit high and we can uh, pass on the uh, certain um, skills, I think we can achieve that. We were unbelievably pleased at the response at the turnout, we had groups contacting us from Jinan, from Harbin, from Tianjin, from Shenzhen, Xiamen, Guangzhou, all of these different provinces. So we realized that we had really struck uh, uh, a chord with the community and with all of these groups and all of these individuals that are trying to do their best. If you want to help your dog, better off help yourself first. Get yourself educated and then help your dog. You know how and you know what you're doing. Mary says part of their mission at ICVS is community service, providing the information and support for people and their pets, and when things don't work out, to offer consultation to the groups and individuals who operate rescue and shelter services. The primary mission is basically to try and help provide accurate, relevant and fact-based information um, in terms of being able to help so many of the organizations that are here who are trying to do good, you know, how to more effectively create a shelter system, how to more uh, effectively prevent infectious diseases, how to set up some processes and structure your organization to help things run smoother. With pet ownership becoming more popular, or rather more fashionable, the problem of pet abandonment is huge and growing. I've definitely noticed an increase um, over these past three to five years. Um, and that trend, unfortunately, is not going away. That's actually just going to continue on as people start to uh, adopt pets for the first time, as they start to uh, purchase pets for the first time. You know, what's really missing that, that causes this abandonment problem is a lack of education and a lack of knowledge about what it is to be responsible for a pet, for life, and to take on all of those responsibilities and obligations, whether it's a time commitment or it's a financial obligation, um, it's a really, really big commitment. And I don't think many people have realized what goes into having a pet. It's not going to be much different from having a child. And Mary says a significant number of animals are being dumped by foreigners when their contracts in China come to an end. Because so many times um, we get lots of calls and lots of emails from families that say, hey, we're moving to such and such country and we cannot take our pets with us. And this is one of the leading causes of abandonment among the international community is that the owners simply cannot or will not take the animals with them when they relocate. These animals were once family pets, loved, cared for, and then simply abandoned when their breed went out of fashion or they became too much of a burden, perhaps through sickness or because the owner failed to train the animal properly. Responsible ownership of domestic animals is a core message of ICVS. So if you are considering getting a puppy or a kitten, you should take time and pause for thought if you're unsure if you can handle the responsibility, then don't get a pet. It's that simple.